Troy Dye has had to learn a lot since he hoisted that Rose Bowl trophy in Pasadena less than six months ago. He's had to learn how to become an NFL rookie. He's had to learn how to become a new father. He shares what it's all been like in this week's edition of Quarantine Chronicles. It's a wild experience and like people are always like, everybody I've talked to is like, yeah, I don't know what, what tomorrow brings because nobody knows like what, what tomorrow's schedule really is going to be like. So it's just always up in the air. So. This is fun to navigate through the first year of the whole coronavirus. <laughs> Troy Dye finished his Oregon career as Pac-12 and Rose Bowl champ. But the trophies didn't come without a cost, including a torn meniscus and broken thumb. So I was on my feet for about a week and a half, two weeks. Dye was ready to get after it. The world was not. When I got back is when it really got, when, it, when stuff kind of hit the fan with the whole coronavirus, because I went down to San Diego to, to start training for my pro day and Two days into it, they shut down the whole facility, so I had to come back to the gym, nowhere to really train. Oregon's Pro Day was the last one before the sports world stopped turning on March 12th. But Di wasn't quite ready, so when his Pro Day in April got canceled, he had to get creative. I was able to put together a little workout video to send out to the 32 teams, and after that, it was kind of just taking off phone calls and doing Zoom FaceTimes and stuff of that nature. Just this whole time, you've had to be very unconventional in proving that you deserve your shot at the NFL. What was the feedback and the mood from the people in the league you talked to leading into the draft? Getting drafted in the fourth round shows that I, I did something right and, and did enough right. So I mean, I'm super happy and super blessed with, with the outcome that, that I was able to receive. Drafted with the 132nd overall pick, Troy Dye became the new man on the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings is probably the best situation I could have could have asked for, to be honest with you. I mean, going to the to this linebacker room with Anthony Barr and Eric Kendricks and, and the other guys in that room is just going to be awesome to just be a sponge and just absorb all this stuff off of them. It'll also be a reunion of sorts, with both Barr and Kendrickson having played college football with Troy's brother Tony at UCLA. Just to have that connection is kind of awesome, and just to be able to, to, to know people that know your, know your family is kind of cool. And the family connection to the Vikings doesn't end there. It's actually just a, a super crazy, crazy small world. I mean, Coach Zimmer was the deepest corner in Cincinnati when my brother played in Cincinnati, so he knows Coach Zimmer really well. Uh, he knows Anthony Boyer, Eric Kendricks. So he knows both the Coach, Coach Zimmer. So uh, when I got the call that, Coach Zimmer actually said, tell you brother, I said, what's up? So, I mean, it was kind of cool just to, to know that he still knows Tony and to have that relationship is, is kind of awesome. What's the first thing you do after he tells you, congratulations, you're officially a Minnesota Viking? I just feel like it was just a lot of stress and, uh, and uh, anxiety relief just mm -hmm. just lifted off my shoulders. Just like I said, just to have that, that milestone in your life just checked off of me your whole life. Everybody, there's always that one person that says, oh, you're not going to be able to do it because the numbers say you can't do it stats are always the one percent of the one percent so i mean just to be able to be a part of that one percent of the one percent is kind of cool it's several new chapters for you too because amidst all of this you became a father so what does it mean how did that change your perspective or your desire to be great in this league it just adds a little extra incentive to just know that you're not only doing it for yourself anymore i mean you actually have a mouth to feed now you have something that depends on you no matter what lights go off from that person just turn it to you so I mean just to know that I have the responsibility to take care of a whole human life is just a big burden on your shoulders and I mean, you have to just take it and take a lot of responsibility that comes with it and just and go with it I mean nobody's gonna be perfect at it there's no instruction there's no there's no rule books to how to be a parent yeah they didn't send out the how to raise a child along with the here's the plays that you need to know Exactly. They didn't, they didn't put that in the install. They, they left that one out. So <laughs> that one on one install out. So that's that's the one I got to get on my own. But it's 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 definitely a fun challenge. Is, is it almost a blessing that mini camp is or rookie camp is virtual because you're getting some time with your son that you wouldn't normally get? That's exactly what we were, me and McKenna were talking about that the other day. I mean, it was just like it super. It sucks because of the situation. I mean, I'm not going to be able to be in the building and go for the practices and get on the field and do all the stuff that you can usually do and get the extra hours maybe. On the flip side, it's like you said, I mean, I, I get to stay home. I get to be a, 
a part of that the first two or three months, which is super integral, uh, super vital to the to the parenting process. So just to be able to hear, be here and, and help Mackenzie and just to see like everything that's been going on this past month, because it's like, man, like if I'd have been gone, like if she didn't have to deal with this all by herself, like that'd have been, it would have been a lot, but it's just, it's just kind of awesome to see, to be able to be here and help her. From four and eight his freshman year to Pac-12 and Rose Bowl champs, Dye's 2020 class is 10 deep in the pros. And the trash talk has already begun between Dye and his former quarterback, the Chargers, Justin Herbert. Justin actually texted me a couple of days ago last week. And he just texted me and was like, man, I hope you have the good cold weather gear. Hope you got to get a new jacket. And I was like, man, this asshole really <laughs> just like just here in Southern California. Like, you can't, I don't, I don't know what to say to that. Like, That's the insult. Enjoy the great weather year round. You have to come back the first time you sack him and you're like, I'm good. Oh. I can't wait for that match. Like that's the one game. Like, oh, like if it comes up on the schedule, like I'm circling like three times, highlighting extra bold. Like I need it.